Hello there, this is David from David Books and Comics, and today I thought I'd continue with my uh, look into the Destroyer novels. So I did the first 25, and uh, right now I'm going to do the next uh, 25, so 26 to number 50. So this is uh, In Enemy Hands, number 26. Uh, again, Hector Garrido cover. And... Congressional Committee Investigates Abuses in America's Spy Network and winds up gutting the nation's intelligence system. Suddenly, the Russians are having a field day. Their special killer teams roam Europe at will. American spies turn up dead in capitals around the world. M meetings are held to plan the next anti-American escapade. Oh, so there you go. America Defenseless. There goes the spy network. So this is in enemy hands. And the next one is number 27, The Last Temple. And again, this is a good copy. I uh, In my collection, so what I've done is I've collected, I'm trying to complete the series. Like I said, I'm, I'm missing only one of the first 100. And I'm trying to complete the series. So before I... Uh, start upgrading i want the the complete the complete set of books anyway so this is the last temple number 27 remo and john battle an ex-nazi in israel who's determined to fulfill hitler's order to exterminate all jews wow okay pretty violent stuff so there you go that's number 27 the last temple this is Ship of Death. So the United States goes to sea, and only Remo and Chun can save it from becoming the world's largest coffin. All right. United Nations finally decides to leave New York. A Greek shipping magnate, one of the world's wealthiest men, you might want to guess who that is at the time, makes them an offer they can't refuse. Their new headquarters will be the biggest ship in the world, a floating pleasure palace. Wow. Okay, so this is, uh, let's see what, yeah, this is a first, copyright 1977. Right, so that's what the, the first editions uh, look like. This is number 29, The Final Death. Meat Eaters of America, Death to the Meat Eaters of America, Chinese Takeout. That's the plan of a, ch a team of Chinese terrorists to arrive in the United States to fulfill a primary prophecy of their cult. So there you go, final death. And this is one of their better books. And this is a uh, fine copy of Mugger Blood. This is number 30. And let's see here. There you go. Nice, crisp, clean copy. It's one of my keeper books. With the exception of this, whoever uh, crossed out the cover price. Here's another one. Probably the same owner. This is uh, number 31, The Headman. An honored and respected business executive is blown up into liver pate as a warning to the president. Will the head man become the main course. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's the headman. And this is where uh, Dr. Uh, Sheila Feinstein, this is the Tiger Women. This is Killer Chromosomes. This is number 32. So what happens when a lady scientist discovers a key to the manipulation of genetic patterns that keep different species from intermingling? The lady becomes a tiger of the man-eating variety. The lady or the tiger. So that's killer chromosomes. These are a lot of fun to read. There you go. It's a nice uh, spine. Very clean copy. So this is so far the, the fine copy that I'm going to keep. This is number 33. 
voodoo die. Hey, here's the here's the villain, the Reverend Prescott Plummer, goes to the island of Bakia in the Caribbean to save souls and bodies, and discovers a fantastic happy drug that natives call mung. How's that? Black magic. Okay. Let's have a look here. Copyright 1978. So that's number 33. And we have Chained Reaction, number 34. Ooh. Wow. Well, that's Chained Reaction. Mimo and Chun short circuit a cancerous connection between old hatreds and new money. And Gettysburg gets blitzed again. There we go. That's number 34. Last call, number 35. Remo and Chun and the sexy Ruby Gonzalez on the bloody trail of a conspiracy of assassins that leads up to the Kremlin. Let's have a look here. Copyright 1978. Very clean, crisp copy. So this one's a keeper. This one has creases on the spine, slight spine roll. There you go. This is number 36. Power play. Oh, this is one of the better ones, according to the writers. So this is America's favorite assassins are hired to protect the nation's raunchiest publisher. Guess who that might be? He's in a wheelchair. And wind up in a maelstrom of mysticism and murder. So, spine roll. Wesley Price was just misunderstood and misled publishing entrepreneur. So that's a gross business. That's power play. And this is uh, obviously a later uh, edition. This is bottom line. The U.S. dollar is saved when Remo and Chun and their sexy friend Ruby discover a deadly conspiracy involving America's wealthiest family. So this is a beautiful copy of a later edition. Let's have a look. It's the second printing from 1980. The first copyright is 1979. So this is number 37, bottom line. We'll move that out of the way. And we have Bay City Blast. This is one of the writer's favorite novels. So this is very slight spine roll. Some markings here on the cover. And of course, Garrido is the, is the artist. And... Bay City Blast. It had to happen. The Mafia finally got smart enough and rich enough to own an American city until Remo and the artillery arrive. Yes, Smith. He's taken over the city. He has given an open invitation to organize crime, to move its operations into Bay City. So that's number 38. And here's another one that's one of their favorites. This is a missing link number 39. The president's beer guzzling brother-in-law is kidnapped. But who has him? The Libyans, the Zionists, the CIA, the mafia, the destroyer? That's how the brother-in-law of the president of the United States started his day. Beer was his blood, his fuel, and his future, if not his finale. There you go. Beer for breakfast. The missing link. Okay, so I just look inside here. Be sure this is the first. Yeah, the reorder numbers, they're number 39. Yeah, 1980. So both of these are keepers because of the, the quality. 
This is number 40, Dangerous Games. Terrorist threats grip the athletes arriving for the Moscow Olympics until Remo and Chun make sport of the deadliest games. There you go. And what, what do we have here? First printing, 1980. So this is the new look of the series with the logo this way. And notice that it's Warren Murphy who's writing. Warren Murphy, throughout the, the writing uh, of The Destroyers, uh, you did use ghostwriters and assistant writers, among whom was Molly Cochran, who was his wife, of course, and uh, other writers subsequent to that in the later issues, later editions, uh, uh, help write the Destroyer novels. Here's another Warren Murphy. This is Firing Line. Now, in the interview that I uh, cited in the Assassin's Handbook, um, Murphy did say that um, Richard Sapir uh, contributed to the editing of the books and in some cases changed the, uh, the content of the, of the story. So just so you know, even though Murphy has his name, other people did help, especially Sapir, in the, edit, in the final edit of the book. So this is Firing Line number 41. And yeah, copyright 1980. This is number 41. And this is 42 Timberline. And it has the, the review from the New York Times. And this is number 43. This one is excellent. This is Midnight Man. And uh, Midnight Man is... Uh, uh, Elmo Wimpler is the main villain and is one of the arch villains in the series. So law enforcement officials think they've seen everything until they bump into Elmo Wimpler, the inventor of a substance that can make anything invisible. Wimpler's found his niche in life by dropping out of sight literally and killing with a device that crushes skulls pretty violent stuff but a very uh, uh dangerous villain this is one of their their better books and this is a unique book because it has this is a special uh collector's edition it's the 10th anniversary of the destroyer it's called balance of power and it says 20 million copies in print. And it features a poster and an interview or a commentary by Warren Murphy as he looked then. So it says where he lived. Warren Murphy lives in New Jersey. He has been a newspaper man, a sequin polisher, and a political consultant. His hobbies are mathematics, chess, martial arts, opera, politics, gambling and sloth occasionally married he is the father of four children he tells how the store destroyer series got started he says the first destroyer was written in my attic in 1963 it finally got published in 1971 and was an overnight success in those days dick sapir was my co-author and partner he retired from the destroyers a couple of years ago and took his name off the books when he decided he didn't want anybody to know he knew me i helped him make the decision by locking him in my cellar for eight days without water <laughs> so nevertheless he still hangs around various characters appear in these pages are dicks occasionally he writes sections when someone or something annoys him anyone who knows him knows that this guarantees a certain frequency of appearance. Anyway, so that's that. He, he obviously is writing uh, in, in a kind of facetious way. So this is copyright 1981. And then you see Molly Cochran, that's his wife, contributed to the writing of The Destroyer. What's unique about this one is it features this. 
it features a poster, a free poster offer, which actually some people ordered. And this poster, for uh, some reason, does appear in a famous film. And I'll let you guess uh, what that film is. And uh, Murphy, in an interview in his former website, which is not currently extant, did indicate that uh, many uh, and some important Hollywood films uh, copied his work. So you may want to guess what the film is. I'll leave it up to you to find out. Anyway, so this is Destroyer number 44, Balance of Power, Collector's Edition. This is 45, The Spoils of War. And it looks like it was read a few times. And this is the reorder is 45, so first. This is 46, nice purple cover. And this features another arch villain. His name is the Dutchman, as he's uh, showcased on the cover. The Dutchman was trained by none other than Nuke, the uh, arch senior arch villain of Chun and uh, Remo Williams. So here you see Dutch threat. Remo and Chun arrive at the vacation paradise of St. Martin, only to find they're deep in Dutch. The beautiful island has been the scene of some, of some very ugly goings-on. A lot of corpses have been showing up, each one bearing the unmistakable stamp of Sinanju, the ancient Korean martial art known only to two men, to the two men, to the two men and Nyuk and supposedly this fellow, the Dutchman. He's one of the arch villains in the series. And there's a, in the Assassin's Handbook, there's an image of what the Dutchman uh, looks like in a kind of martial arts, mystical kind of pose there. All right. So that's number 46. Number 47 features the return of one of another arch villain, Mr. Gordon's. This is number 47. That's Dying Space. And this is a good copy. Some tear on the cover. These are excellent reads, I'll tell you. 19, this is uh, first printing, 1982. And we have, in number 48, a super novel and this is one of the thickest novels and this features the return of Richard Sapir it's called profit motive there you go it seems like a good idea at first a bacterium developed to consume oil spills at sea but when the bug mutates threatening to convert all the petroleum in the world into wax Western civilization is suddenly up for grabs, and a lot of slimy characters are determined not to let it slip through their fingers, which is where Remo and Chun come in, that is, until the master of Sinanju cuts out to join the opposition. Hmm, what's that about? The Destroyer and Cure. Notice it's an acronym. Uh, have reached the end of the road. So the acronym, just so you know, the acronym is never revealed in the entire history of the Destroyer novels, which makes it kind of mysterious. Anyway, so that's profit motive. This is number 49, Skin Deep. And this is a very, uh, I should say, a fine copy. Of, of that one. Beautiful red cover. Hector Garrido cover. Oh, wow. What is this? Stratford Festival. Oh, way. All right. If you want to see a Shakespearean play in Stratford, Ontario, you can go here. Okay. So this is 
a first skin deep nice nice cover and I'll show you the last in the series that I have or the last one I'm going to show today this is number 50 this is killing time Let's move it. the books out of the way number 50 killing time this is golden edition and it is literally a gold type of cover and this is the best copy I found of this edition so far. Oh yes, I, buy, I remember buying this years ago in a mimical bookstore, a bookstore that doesn't exist anymore. And let's see what's inside here. Copyright uh, 19, first printing 1982, copyright 1982. All right, so that's Killing Time. What is this about? America's beautiful people are playing follow the leader with their latest guru, diet doctor Felix Fox. As Fox's disciples are dropping pounds, however, U.S. military leaders are dropping like flies. Coincidence? Maybe. But cures been counting casualties and Remo and Chen are dispatched to muscle in and settle the score. Well, there you go. So that's Killing Time, number 50. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, look again at part two of my collection of destroyers with their interesting stories and their uh, nice covers. And uh, so thanks everyone for watching the former video. Thanks everyone for your comments. And uh, please... Uh, Continue to subscribe. Uh, if uh, if you have anything, or if you know what film, I can uh, I can uh, give you a clue. If you know what film that poster appeared in, uh, you can put it in the comments. But I'll give you a clue. It uh, had to do with this uh, robot. That's about all I'll say. Otherwise, I'll reveal too much. Anyways. Thanks everyone for watching. Give me a thumbs up uh, if, for a like. Uh, feel, again, thanks everyone for subscribing. And again, feel free to comment. Thanks. Bye.